I'm guessing you're watching this video because you have a window motor that's doing this. And if it's doing that, it's because the hall sensors aren't working properly on the encoder. What we're going to do today, we're not going to take the door panel off. We're going to actually investigate both the hall sensors on the motor from the B pillar harness connector. And what we're going to do, we're going to undo that, strip it down a little bit and then put it back together. And we're going to put in some probes and use the oscilloscope to measure the hall sensor A and hall sensor B signals. They both should look pretty much the same. What we're looking for is we're looking for the fact that they've shorted together. Can we see that on an oscilloscope? Push that in there like that, give you a bit more room to get that back in because it's really, really, really tight. What you want to do, you want to whack your pins in and then bend them at a 90 degree angle. What we want is these two wires here. Those are the hall sensor wires. You've got a brown and red and a gray and brown. And when you tap into those, you should get a square wave signal from the encoder, which is situated around the shaft that spins where the motor lifts the windows up and down. And we're going to take a good close look at that with the Think Tool, which is basically a mixing scope. It's excellent scope. So there we are, I'm activating it. Got the old scope set up. And here's the fault codes. Couple of fault codes for the front window, but we're more concerned with the ones on the back, right window, because they say yes and we can't erase them. You notice the, it mentions that they're shorted. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at not only the signal, but we're going to look if both of those are shorted together. Now, if they are, I've got a pretty damn good idea what it is. And once we've scoped it, we'll pull the motor out and we'll see if we can see any visual signs of where it's damaged and what is basically causing this issue. When the windows don't work in automatic mode and you have these fault codes, no amount of calibration will fix the problem if the sensors aren't working. Remember, the safety and the anti-pinch, they need to be there. Now then, the above signal, the yellow trace for one of the sensors is quite sharp. But can you see, you've got a massive peak there. And that peak is that means that the blue and yellow are shorted together. There's a peak at the front and a peak at the back. They're shorted together. When we operate it and the, the signal lengthens, that's because the window is at the top and it's reached maximum travel, the short tends to disappear. However, there you can clearly see the aid of those arrows I've put on that they are basically shorted together and that is essentially the issue. The pattern is a little bit distorted but in theory if they weren't shorted here and here it wouldn't matter that much it would still be able to read that at the junction box or the uh, FEM module or in the old cars the uh, footwell module and the way these systems work they take the signal and then they will switch relays internally in these modules at the front of the car and they'll send the voltage back to the motor send the motor up and down and that's how the system works so i promise you i'd uh, show you the motor there's a visual clue every time if you don't have any tools and you don't have a scope or even a even a little multimeter instead of taking all this wind regulator off this because uh, it's tensioned under, under a lot of pressure just pull the motor out three screws at the back just pull it out it's a worm thread that way you don't have to disconnect the wind regulator motor from the regulator and all the cable will spin out of your there we see, instantly, corrosion. That shouldn't be there, should it? It's got a seal on that. Shouldn't have any corrosion whatsoever. Let's take a closer look at the circuit board and see exactly what's wrong with it in maybe a little bit more detail than what we would normally see. But before that, just to show you how this system works, the little brown ring there, that's the encoder, and that is what's responsible as I'm spinning. That is going to create that signal that we saw. That square wave signal, and there's a hall sensor left and right, just about 45 degree offset from each other. And as it spins left and right, creates that lovely signal. And the control unit knows exactly where the window is, which position the window's in. Is it up? Is it down? Is it in the middle? Is it open? Is it closed? Everything comes from these two sensors on this lovely little brown ring, which is essentially a magnet. And it works basically like an anti-lock braking system sensor on a drive shaft. It's exactly the same principle. There's no difference whatsoever. Of course, it's a bit more fancy an ABS DSC system, but it works pretty much the same. And for redundancy, of course, we've got two sensors. There's a closer look. You can see the soldered points, absolutely corroded. I did think about cleaning them up, maybe to stop them shorting together. But really, let's be honest, just recommend the new motor. There's no point messing around. And to fit it back together, it's really easy. You just slide it in, mesh it in, 
tying up your Torx 20s. Whack on your connector. Put your panel back on and order a new one. And let's take a look at these wires. So the wiring is very simple. The yellow and brown is the power supply for the hall sensors. Grey and brown is one of the hall sensors. And the other one, which is about 33 degrees apart, the red and brown wire is the second sensor. And those are responsible for sending a signal to the body module. The body module will then activate the relays, which will send 12 volts on the green, and the black and blue will have a ground. That will send the motor one way. Then the relays will disengage, it will go the opposite way because they're basically dual polarity relays. So then you'll have a positive on the, on the um, black and blue, and on the green you'll have a negative, and so on and so forth, so the window can go up and down accordingly. And essentially that's about it. There's nothing really much more to say. It's a very, very simple system. And then the feedback for anti pinch or some little kid sticks his head in the window. Those hall signals will stretch nice and wide. And that'll stop the current supplying the motor and stop the kid having his ears chopped off. And that's about it. Just a nice easy video for you. So the next time you diagnose a window, you can refer to this video and you can look and see exactly what you need to do. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.